circular functions are based on the unit circle. So when we're looking at our unit circle, we know that it starts at 1 comma 0, and this is where it's 0 degrees or 360 degrees, or 0 equals 2 pi. Um, and we remember that we always go counterclockwise to get our points. We have 90 here, which is the same as pi over 2. This is 180, which is pi. This right here is 270, or 3 pi over 2. Um, and as we're going through this, uh, basically with the circular function, what the main goal behind it is, you know, how to use your unit circle. And we've talked about this before. Um, you know, if you have a certain angle, let's say I'm looking for, um, oh, let's go with 150. If I'm looking for 150 degrees, or, you know, if this is 5 pi over 6, I know that 150 is going to lie somewhere over here. Um, I can use my unit circle in order to determine that the cosine is that negative square root 3 over 2. The sine is then a positive 1 half. And that's just based on the unit circle and how to use this unit circle in order to figure out those cosine, sines, and tangents, which we've talked about. Um, on the flip side of that, the other thing that we need to talk about with the unit circle, with circular functions, isn't necessarily the unit circle, but it is still a graph, and that's the graph of sine and the graph of cosine. Um, looking at the graph of cosine here, uh, it starts in the graph here that we would plug into our y equals on our graphing calculator. This is all actually based off of the unit circle. Um, so the highest value that you can go in, on your y, you know, based on your unit circle is 1. The lowest value you can go is negative 1. Um, so when you type in, and you've got to think about this for a minute, Going back to our unit circle, if I have the cosine of theta, if theta is 0, we're looking at our unit circle, if theta is 0, then our cosine starts at 1. And you can see that right here. It starts at 1. And so that's just a basic, you know, f trying to figure out where to go based on our unit circle. So it starts at 1, and it starts to go down. Right here would be our 90 degrees, because based on our unit circle here, we're at 0 comma 1. So right here is pi over 2. We keep going down. We eventually hit we eventually hit negative 1 at pi, and then we go back up and come back down. And this pattern just re keeps repeating itself. Um, granted, I'm not very even here, but <laughs> you get the point. Uh, so we get back up to 1 when we hit 2 pi. And that's something very important to note because... What we're going to say then is that cosine theta has a period for, you know, when is it that you get back and re start repeating the pattern? So when do I start repeating this pattern again? And that's the period length of 2 pi. So now we're going to look at the sine. Sign. 
shift this over a little bit. Um, so when I'm looking at this one, again, it's all based off of the unit circle. So I can go back here and say, okay, when theta is zero, the sign is zero. So I'm actually starting at zero, and I'm going up, and I'm coming back down, and I'm going back up. So this is at zero. This one you can guess is at pi over two. We got pi, and then we got three pi over two, and back to two pi. Okay, so this is all based on that, all based on our unit circle. And that, that pattern would repeat itself. You know, I could take this whole chunk here and just shift it over, say over here. Okay, so this one actually has a period length of two pi as well. So this is something that you're going to be looking at and trying to figure out um, based on actual graphs is to figure out, you know, what is the, the period length for a certain function. Again, you just look to see when it starts to repeat itself.